All right, welcome riders. This is the Ride or Dynasty pod number 34, and we will be bringing you a recap of all the week's games and standout players once again. I am joined by my curly-haired colleague. Honestly, I'm just jealous of any hair. What's the haps, Eric? Not much. Just getting uh, getting over a wicked cold here. So hopefully I don't sound too disgusting to all you wonderful listeners out there. Uh, I'll try to keep my sniffles to a minimum. But let's get to it. All right. Well, I'll try to edit them out if I can. But we have a lot in store for the listeners tonight. Uh, remember, give us a follow on Twitter. We're at Ride or Dynasty. And like and subscribe the pod. If you leave a review, I promise we'll read it on air. But we are first going to start with a trip to my favorite place in the world, Colossus Corner, for a little visit with Mr. Michael. Then we're going to be taking a look at the past week's results and letting you know if there are any players to scoop or shoot. And then we will be hearing from Ryan Bickerstaff about a Debbie prospect that you might not know of. Finally, we'll hit out all the news you need to know before next week. Eric, are you ready to do this? Absolutely. If you check your GPS, you will see you are about to enter Kloss's Corner. Take it away, Michael. They got their corner, I got mine. This is my corner. Well, I'm standing on a corner. Well, I want my corners. Welcome back to Kloss's Corner. I'm your buddy, Michael Kloss. Lamar Jackson versus Deshaun Watson was among the most talked about matchups in week 11. But you didn't hear really a lot about another quarterback that's just been crushing it since his bye week and really crushing it on the season as a whole. Like Rodney Dangerfield, this guy gets no respect and he absolutely should. I am talking about Buffalo Bills quarterback Josh Allen. Now, coming into the year, I had him as the QB 16 in my dynasty rankings. As I mentioned, since week 6, he's been the QB 6 overall and is a QB 1 in the conversation here. Get this, 8 passing touchdowns, 4 rushing touchdowns during the span since his bye. Now, while that's been extremely impressive, Allen has really been very predictable. You can actually plan on his projected points depending on his matchup and that's played out all season he's destroying those weak defenses like he should and he's performing and giving you good quarterback numbers against teams that can't stop the quarterback like Miami twice Cleveland in the bottom 10 for stopping QBs so far uh you know while he's still giving you the decent score scoring against teams like Philly and Washington middle of the road at giving up QB points from a fantasy perspective Now, Matthew Barry tweeted, in the last 65 years, only two quarterbacks have rushed for seven touchdowns in consecutive years. Can you guess who that is? One you might be able to, which is Cam Newton. The other one, our friend Josh Allen. That rushing floor is really propelling his value these last four contests, especially, and helping owners trust him. That's a big deal. Uh, Another awesome fact from Bills beat writer Matt Perino, Josh Allen is on pace for just under 3,500 passing yards, about 530 rushing yards, and 32 total touchdowns. Um, According to the tweet, 21 passing and 11 rushing. He's completing about a little over 60% of his passes, which is up 8 points from his rookie year, and he's got an 85.4 passer rating, which is actually up 18 points. So keep in mind, that's simply his pace, right? Looking ahead, Denver, Dallas, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and New England loom, all defenses ranking in the top 10, with three of those DSTs uh, being in the top four in stopping QB. So you should be concerned about that. And don't forget, three of those five contests are on the road. Now, We really have only seen him face a great defense or at least an adept defense and uh, really stopping those QBs. That was once, and that was New England in week four. Allen was just downright terrible in that game. Uh, Had a couple interceptions, bailed out owners with a rushing score. Now, because of that ability to set your watch by him so far this year, um, I'm actually avoiding Allen for the remainder of the season. Um, You might be able to say his rushing floor, it does present some safety, and I get that. Uh, I'm just 
believing in the trend that's been setting up this season, according to the data here. Uh, you can trade into better matchups if you want to package him in a deal, uh, maybe to owners who simply subscribe to the, hey, what have you done for me lately mentality, um, or hold on to him for next year, which is probably the way to go. But I'm telling you right now, he is not cracking any of my lineups at this point in time, and I don't think that he should be cracking your lineup either. Well, guys, what do you think? Where am I on this? Where are you on this subject of Mr. Josh Allen? All right. Well, a little bit of a fire take. I have to agree with him on that. Uh, How do you feel about Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills? I'm also going to agree. I'm really not a big Josh Allen believer. I think he's a bit overhyped right now, and he's got a tough end of the season. I'd be looking to move to other options. Very good. All right, so. Let's get to our week in review. Starting on Thursday, uh, Cleveland beat Pittsburgh 21-7, to but more than that, they beat Mason Rudolph with a, a helmet. Yeah, Garrett deserves to get suspended, absolutely, but Rudolph seemed to start and escalate the, the skirmish and really got away scot-free without any suspension, and then, and then he kind of turned to the refs and cried for a penalty. So I, I don't know about you, Eric. I was a little disappointed. Uh, if you're going to act like a big tough guy, then you got to be a big tough guy. Yeah, that was pretty weak all around. I don't think anybody really came out looking good there, but that's life in the NFL sometimes. There you go. Next up, we've got the Cowboys and the Lions. Dallas won 35-27, and that Dallas offense just kept on rolling. Dak racked up his third 400-yard game this season. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. He's been a top 10 QB three of his first four seasons in the league, assuming he finishes this season as the third quarterback where he ranks currently. He's been on a real tear. He's leading the league in passing yardage, but he does have a tight close uh, to the year. Got the Patriots, the Bills, Bears, Rams and Eagles have been playing some better defense. He's got the Redskins in week 17, but that's a little bit of a different story. Nobody's really playing many games in week 17. One of the things I'm really optimistic about Dak for is his supporting cast is fantastic. We know about Omari Cooper. We know about Ezekiel Elliott. But Michael Gallup has really come on strong, had a great sophomore season so far. He's on pace for 80 catches, 1,300 yards, and six touchdowns, which is phenomenal. And he had nine catches for 148 on Sunday. He's only 23. His stock should be skyrocketing, and I don't feel like there's enough hype around Michael Gallup right now. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um... I have him on a few rosters, but you should look to add him where you can. And finally, Bo Scarborough snuck in for 14 carries, 55 yards and a touchdown for Detroit this week. Is he somebody you're interested in with Carrion Johnson hurt? Man, only in a pinch. They seem to not want to give the ball to any one guy in the backfield, whether or not Carrion Johnson is healthy or not. I like Bo Scarborough. He had a lot of uh, fans. I think actually Matt Waldman was a fan of Scarborough and thought he might be pretty successful in the NFL. So it's good to see him get a chance and actually produce. Yeah, I think he's one of those guys where you want to pick him up, churn him through the bottom of your roster. He's probably going to wash out pretty soon. But there's nothing wrong with that. Take a flyer. What the hell? Yeah, nothing to lose, right? Yep. All right, so the Houston Texans played the Baltimore Ravens. Now, were they there? Were they on the field? I don't know, man. Baltimore trounced them 41-7. to This game was generating buzz as a showdown between two electric quarterbacks. Unfortunately, there wasn't much to get amped about as Watson failed to deliver. Was that enough uh, electricity puns for you? No, I want more. Keep it going. Uh, I have no more. Sorry. Um, Anyway, so Gus Edwards had a great day in the second half, but unless you think the Ravens are going to blow teams out every week, he is unstartable. So don't even ask the question. Stick with Ingram. He's the guy who got the carries when the game was still uh, contested. Now, the Texans absolutely abandoned the run game as they fell behind, leaving their game plan one-dimensional, which isn't good for any offense. I have Watson in a few leagues. I have Hopkins and will continue to start them with confidence. Do not abandon them because of one loss to a very good defense. All right. And the Saints beat the Buccaneers 34-17. to 
Michael Thomas, 8 for 114 in a touchdown. He's been on a tear all year. But the most notable piece about this, I think, was that he didn't miss a beat when Drew Brees was out. Kept on rolling with Teddy Bridgewater. Was actually on an absurd 130 catch, 1700 yard pace with Bridgewater in that five game stretch. He's been the wide receiver seven or better all four years of his career. I was a long time Odell Beckham is the wide receiver one in Dynasty. I know DeAndre Hopkins was the trendy pick recently. Devontae Adams got some love, but I don't think there's really any any argument for anybody over Michael Thomas at this point. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, he is Mr. Consistent. I love Michael Thomas. Absolutely. In other news, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, O.J. Howard was benched after 16 snaps with zero catches. He's been pretty abysmal so far this season after flashing uh, in you know, smaller samples uh, the past two years. What's going on there? Is he somebody we should be buying? I hate O.J. Howard. Uh, I know Ryan is a huge fan because he came from Alabama, but I mean, you got to show, you got to show up in the games that you're, you know, that you play in and he does not show up. Yeah, I agree. It kind of feels like at this point, we're just waiting for him to get traded to another team. And that's not an encouraging sign for somebody who was supposed to be a game changing tight end. Absolutely. Looks like Tarzan plays like Jane. Yep. And speaking of playing like Jane, Ronald Jones, four carries for 13 yards. What have we been saying the last two weeks? Although I'm kind of just picking on him because Tampa Bay only ran the ball six times with running backs. But got to take my shots where I can get them. Yeah, absolutely. Forget Rojo. Uh, So the Atlanta Falcons trounced the Carolina Panthers. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And this game was definitely a tale of two QBs. Matt Ryan is slowly rebounding from his fall swoon with his first 300-yard passing game since October 13th, I believe. Now, he has games against Tampa, Carolina, and Jacksonville coming up. But he also has the Saints and 49ers between those games. So feel safe with Ryan as your starting QB. But you have to have a backup for the tough matchups. Now, I did the research. I recommend picking up Daniel Jones, who should be on waivers in 1QB leagues or redraft leagues. He faces Green Bay and Miami when Ryan faces the Saints and 49ers. So that would be a great streaming QB option for you. Now, do you ever stream QBs? I try to avoid it. I like to just roll with one guy and stick with it. I don't like playing the matchups. I don't think I do it well. Yeah, I know. It's, it seems tough, but I tend to end up at least with one or two positions where I'm always playing the matchup week to week, especially in my couple redraft leagues. Um, But yeah, I, I think if you have Matt Ryan and you can pick up Daniel Jones, you are, you have that position locked down for the rest of the season. Now, looking at the other side of the QBs, Kyle Allen has fizzled, dispelling the rumors that the Panthers have their QB of the future. Despite favorable matchups in two of the next three weeks, I wouldn't count on the second-year player outside of a super flex league. So I am moving on from Kyle Allen. I don't think he is the answer there. What do you think? Are they moving on from Cam next year after what Kyle Allen has done? I think they don't really know yet, and I guess I can't blame them. I think they wanted to, but a game like that this past weekend, that's going to give you some doubts. I think Kyle Allen still has some things to prove over the rest of the season. All right, Cardinals at Niners. San Francisco got back on track with a 36-26 win. A couple of rookies had some big games. Debo Samuel had 8 for 134 after 8 for 112 last week. And Kyler Murray had 150 and two touchdowns in the air, plus another 67 yards and a touchdown rushing. Uh, Debo Samuel, I really like him. Kyle Shanahan's offenses are always fun. I don't think Dante Pettis is something to be worried about at this point, and Emmanuel Sanders has been good, but he's an older receiver. Debo Samuel has a bright future in San Francisco. Kyler Murray, on the other hand, that was a tough matchup, and he looked completely comfortable. 
He's been top 10 in points per game all season, and he's bordering on the top five quarterbacks in all of Dynasty at this point. Yeah, I I have to agree with you on that one. Um, Debo Samuel is looking great. I know Matt Waldman just released a piece on what happened to Dante Pettis. I know I've mentioned Waldman twice so far. He is somebody who I read a lot of his work. Uh, I'm interested to see what happened to Dante Pettis because he had everything going for him. Debo Samuel is on a hot streak. Jalen Hurd was just uh, put on IR for the rest of the year. He is not coming back. He is somebody who I believe in, but not for this year. Kyler Murray, uh, you know, he has that special something. He is not afraid of matchups. He is not afraid of defenses. He is all about the competition. So I am buying him if I can. But unfortunately, I don't think you can buy him anywhere right now. Yeah, I think that would be a tough one. But like you said, I think the biggest thing with him is he just always looks comfortable. He's never never rattled. It's crazy. It's probably because he's used to playing that uh, baseball where you know all the great athletes come from. Hey, don't knock my sport, man. <laughs> Sorry, man. All right, so the Minnesota Vikings beat the Denver Broncos in a great comeback. I mean, silly me, I thought with the score 23-7 entering the fourth, the Broncos had a shot. But to answer the question, no, I don't like that. Uh, Kirk Cousins. Um, Hating on my guy there. I I don't like that at all. But if you have Kirk Cousins, his schedule after this next week uh, where he has a bye is nice. He finishes with Seattle, Detroit, the Chargers, and Green Bay. He is a strong candidate to lead you to the championships you want. Uh, So if you have Kirk Cousins, feel comfortable starting him. How do you feel about Kirk Cousins? He's all right. He's he's very... Hot and cold, but they've got good wide receivers there. I think the biggest concern is how much are they going to throw the ball. But those are some some good offensive teams that are coming up on the schedule. I think they're going to have to be in some competitive games where they can't just you know tuck into a shell. I like Kirk Cousins down the stretch. All right, and if you have the opportunity, I'm recommending that you pick up Philip Lindsay. I know people are down on him. People believe in Royce Freeman, but if you can still trade for him, do it. He is a high-end RB2 right now with a sweet schedule to end the year. The best run defense he faces is Houston, who just gave up 263 yards to Baltimore, including over 100 yards to Gus Edwards. So if you can get Phillip Lindsay, get him. I am a firm believer in him. He is an awesome player. Is that a hot take? No, I... I'm not a huge Philip Lindsay fan. I'll be honest. I was selling him pretty much everywhere coming into the season. I've come around on him a long way. He's he's had an impressive season. He's convinced me he's for real. He's still not the sort of player I can find myself owning in many places. But I am a believer that he's a he's a real NFL running back and a, a good one at that. Why? Why won't you? Why don't you believe in him? I need to hear why somebody doesn't believe in him. Is it because of his draft capital? Yeah, he, I don't like that he's small. I don't like that he's he has no draft capital, and I don't like that he's splitting touches with a also somewhat impressive higher drafted young running back. And that's again not to knock Philip Lindsay. I think he's good. I don't think he's going away because of any of that. It's just one of those things where. He's never going to be a 300 carry feature back. And I know that's an unfair standard to hold everybody to, but he's not the sort of guy I can find myself paying up for. But what player in the NFL really outside of a couple are 300 carry guys anymore? Everything is a split backfield. Oh yeah. I'm just really picky about what running backs I will buy. I mean, I, I, I really hate anybody but workhorses and then I'll just shove in, you know, Matt Breida and James White and scrap my way if I don't have a workhorse. Man, fantasy was so much more fun when, like, there were 20 running backs getting 250 carries plus a year. Yeah, yeah. But that was those were the days when anybody was good at fantasy football. Now it takes a lot of study and a lot of skill. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, next up, Jets at the Redskins. Uh, on, sec- on second thought... 
as as Jets and Redskins fans here, uh, I think we're going to move on. You know, <laughs> you you could spend a little bit of time talking about how my Jets doubled up on your Washington racist name uh, football team did. There's so much wrong with that statement, but like I said, I don't think our listeners want to hear it. We're going to move on. <laughs> Anyways, the Jaguars and the Colts also played last weekend, and Indy came to a comfortable win, 33-13. Nick Foles returned, but the big news of the day was Marlon Mack broke his hand, and Jonathan Williams actually filled in nicely, wasn't really aware he was uh, still hanging around in a very active role. But uh, is he the guy to own moving forward? Or do you want Naheem Hines or uh, Jordan Wilkins, who well, did I, not play Sunday? I have Naheem Hines on a team, so I'm going to say Naheem Hines. But I don't know if he's going to get the carries. Yeah, I think I, I, I think, think Frank Reich is a great coach, and he's going to go with whatever whoever has the hot hand. Agreed. And I think that's a similar situation to Bo Scarborough, where – if you can snag Jonathan Williams or Jordan Wilkins, go and do it. But that's a roster churn, end of the roster. Maybe you start them in a pinch if you've got buy issues. But there's no long-term value there. Well, hey, I, I'll, I will say, if you can pick up Jonathan Williams and he has a good week next week and you can turn him for a draft pick, I saw somebody in my big money league trade Brian Hill to somebody for a second round pick and yeah i know i was like good for you you know that is an amazing trade so if you can find somebody who's getting some carries at the the end of the year teams are desperate for people putting up points as they get to the championships so he's a definite definite signing yeah and it's easy to get kind of sold on these guys who flash quickly and they're still young and, you know, oh, they could be anything. There's so much that's going to change between now and next season. They're not going to be relevant. I mean, Jonathan Williams had so much hype coming into uh, the Bills. I mean, he was going to be the next big thing. But he even hung around the Saints for a bit, and that was exciting because, oh, Jonathan Williams on the Saints. Saints love running backs, but Uh -uh. at a certain point. Yep, all have. over. So, Buffalo Bills at Miami Dolphins. Uh, Buffalo won 37-20. All I have to say about that, I mean, I know Michael talked about uh, Josh Allen, but John Brown, John Brown, John Brown. It was my best take of the off season. The first pod we did for Ryder Dynasty, I talked about how they were just going to throw the ball to John Brown. And he was finally going to be the Smokey Brown we wanted him to be. Get him on your team. Start him if you have him. All he does is produce. So, New England Patriots at Philadelphia Eagles. So, I was a little bit surprised. But with a perfect passer rating, try to get the Pats QB on... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That was uh, Edelman with the only TD for New England. Uh, This game killed football. Almost as badly as the last Super Bowl. It was a game filled with nothing but disappointment for both football and fantasy fans. Do you, but, do you feel better after getting that that New England hatred, that Tom Brady hatred out of your system? You know, uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I was going to try to come up with some excuse, but I'll allow I, it. I feel better. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm sure you're not a big Patriot lover either. Deep down, a little bit. I kind of uh, can't help but like them. They're just so impressive. I've always hated you. <laughs> <laughs> so, despite a poor fantasy score this week, James White is the only running back that is a reliable starter for the Pats. If he is more than your running back, too, you aren't going far in the playoffs. But if there's anybody you're going to start reliably on that team, it's James White. Now, Dallas Scotter continues to show that in a shallow tight end pool this year, he can be your starter in a pinch. He put up only three three catches for 36 yards, but he scored that TD. And that's going to do for most weeks. He should be a top 15 tight end moving forward. I mean, in this up-and-down tight end market, Hooper's out, 
Kittle was out. I started him in a league where I'm fighting for the playoffs. I'll take three for 36 and a touchdown. Do you have tight ends that you're going to start ahead of Dallas Goddard right now? No, I mean, I don't have Dallas Goddard anywhere, but I've got some teams that are hurting at tight end, and I would happily take Goddard. I mean, in win now mode, I would take Goddard over what I have. Absolutely. I mean, speaking of teams, you and I tried to get a trade done under the deadline, and we literally missed. Who was it? It was Kittle for a first, and who? Noah Fant. Fant. Yeah. Noah Fant. Yeah. And we missed it by, like, five seconds. Somehow that's going to end up – Kittle's going to kill me in the playoffs now, and I'm going to – oh. I'm and I'm going to win this. the championship. Yeah, I'm never going to get over it. Oh, uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's man. Be, it's all good. Um, uh, We'll see. Bengals at the Raiders. Oakland pulled out another win, 17-10. Didn't really blow the Bengals out, who are absolutely terrible. But the Raiders are quietly in the heart of the playoff race at 6-4. and four. So, I mean, the Chicago Bears at the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams won 17-7. There was nothing good in that game what the Chicago bears are and what the LA Rams have become is embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, Trubisky was thought to be a great, like up and coming QB in a Matt Nagy system. Eh, wrong. Jared Goff. You know, they, they, they thought that entire team was on the rise, but they figured it out and nobody is making any adjustments on the Rams. So I don't get what's going on. Um, and just to end, I mean, last night, Kansas City beat the Los Angeles Chargers. I think Phillip Rivers is at the end of his rope. Patrick Mahomes is definitely playing well, but everybody thought he was a candidate for regression. Not that he was going to play worse, but just that he wasn't going to be able to put up 50 touchdowns again. And even though he started off the year looking like he would, you know, you're going to get weeks like this week where he plays well, but, you know, the touchdowns just aren't there like they were last year. Right. Nothing wrong with him. Just can't keep that up forever. No, it's it's impossible. And unfortunately, whenever you say regression to fantasy football fans, especially Kansas City fans, they think you're saying Patrick Mahomes is going to get worse. Patrick <laughs> Mahomes is a great quarterback. He is not getting worse. He has a brilliant future ahead of him outside of injury. And I hope I didn't jinx him, but you just can't do that every year. You know, to go 16 and 0 takes a lot of luck to pass for 50 some touchdowns takes a lot of luck. Yep. Totally agree. Uh, Philip Rivers, are you selling him everywhere that you can? No, I don't know. This, this last recent stretch kind of reminds me of what we went through with Tom Brady a couple times and Peyton Manning a couple times. He's getting up there. He's had a bad couple weeks, but Philip Rivers has thrown a lot of picks in the past in his career. And he's just so cheap. I don't think you could sell him for anything in Dynasty League anyways. Not that I'm going out and trying to buy him, but I'm not that worried about him. I still have faith in Philip Rivers. So if somebody offered you a second round pick for Philip Rivers in a super flex league, would you take it? That I would take, but I think I would have taken that before this last two-game stretch with six interceptions. Ooh, that hurts. That's Jets-like. That's Redskins-like. Yeah, it hasn't been good. It was an ugly It was an ugly six picks, too. <laughs> All right, well, before we get to the news, our resident Debbie dirtbag, Ryan Bickerstaff, has pulled some dirt on another under-the-radar prospect. Eric, I don't know where he keeps finding these guys. Yeah, he's on top of his game, man. Ryan, who do you have for us this week? Ryan here, back with another under-the-radar Devi prospect. As far as recruiting goes, this player is a huge miss, as he was classified as a two-star prospect by rivals and a three-star by 24-7. However, these designations have not stopped him from becoming one of the best wide receivers in the nation. And just who might I be talking about here? Well, that would be none other than Justin Jefferson, the junior from LSU. 
Justin is actually the third Jefferson brother to play for LSU. Jordan was a quarterback, and Ricky was a defensive back. That's just a fun fact, though. I covered Justin Jefferson back in July when he made my list of the top Debbie receivers of 2019. He came in at number 15. He is currently 10th in my class of 2020 receiver rankings, which is the deepest class I've ever seen at the position. As a sophomore in 2018, Jefferson caught 54 passes for 875 yards and 6 touchdowns in 13 games, 12 of which were starts. As a junior this season, in only 10 games, Jefferson has exceeded each of these metrics, collecting 71 passes for 1,010 yards and 11 touchdowns. Now mind you, this is against SEC competition. These numbers include big-time performances against Florida and Texas in particular, but Jefferson has had at least 5 receptions for 60 yards in all but one game so far. In the one game he did not eclipse those figures, he scored a touchdown to compensate. Now of course, stats don't tell the whole story. Film on Jefferson also shows an overall improvement in his game. This extra production is not solely a result of the meteoric rise of Joe Burrow as a passer. In the previous write-up I did on Jefferson, which can be found at RyderDynasty.com, I talked about how he's a high-effort player. One of the faster guys on the field with speed in the 4-4s, he's consistent, and while he was used most often as a deep threat in 2018, that he had the physical traits necessary to progress as a route runner and become a more complete receiver. Jefferson has improved in this area and more in 2019. He can line up in the slot as well as on the boundary and is really good at getting open by finding soft spots in the defense. He's a reliable chain mover with big play ability who displays good hands and the ability to make tough catches in traffic, holding onto the ball even when he gets hit. He's also surprisingly shifty for a guy who stands 6'3". This height also allows Jefferson to be a dangerous target in the red zone. One of the most impressive plays Jefferson has made in 2019, in my opinion, was the touchdown he scored against Texas in the fourth quarter of that game. It was third and 17. The score was 37 to 31. LSU had the lead. The Tigers needed a big clutch play to convert this down and not give Texas the ball back with plenty of time for Sam Ellinger to lead the Longhorns down the field for a go-ahead score. Jefferson beat his defender by a step to make the reception for first down yardage, but he wasn't done. Jefferson turned up field, slipped a tackle, and outran the entire Texas defense for a score that sealed the game for LSU. This play says as much about Jefferson's mental makeup as it does about his athleticism and ability as a receiver. He's a guy who can be counted on to make a play when the game is on the line. While he's still a junior and could opt to return to college for one more year, Jefferson's major at LSU was interdisciplinary studies. Translation, he's in college to go pro. Should he declare, he'll see a rise in draft stock throughout the offseason and find himself in the second round conversation for the NFL draft by the time it rolls around. I see Jefferson best suited as a number two receiver for a pro team, but he'll be a pretty good one. In a dynasty context, I would be willing to spend a late second round pick in a rookie draft on Jefferson. Of course, this could increase based on his landing spot. Well, that wraps things up for me here. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. I'll catch you next week with a new Under the Radar Devi prospect. I guess I have to add yet another wide receiver to my radar, uh, Justin Jefferson. You know, this is great. I'm in some Devi leagues, and I love this segment each week, only because I can find guys who aren't on any rosters right now that I can still pick up. Do you play any Devi, Eric? I do not. I'd really love to, uh, but this has really been getting me pumped up for the 2020 draft. I know the hype's been building. It's crazy. It's almost impossible to buy 2020 draft picks at this point. Uh, This segment is not helping, but hopefully I can snag a few. You know what? Um, I think if there's anything I've learned from Ryan is that the 2021 draft for wide receivers is going to be rich with wide receivers. So nobody is parting with their 2020s. Maybe you can pick up some 2021s. Uh, People are kind of overlooking what's going to be coming up. And I don't know. Everybody always looks at the draft ahead and think it's the best. But the other thing, too, is everybody always looks at every junior and senior and says, oh, my God, this draft class is going to be loaded and forgets that half those juniors aren't actually going to be in the draft class. So kind of agree with you there. Absolutely. Well, I can tell by the time on my watch that it is time for the news. All right. Uh, to a tag. Blah, 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 blah. I can't say his name. Uh, only Ryan can say his <laughs> name and he says it uh, ever so smoothly. But man, he hurt his hip. Now I've heard it's horrible. I thought it was career ending based on Bo Jackson and our resident uh, athletic trainer, Nick, was backing me up. 
But I've heard some good things. What are you? What have you heard about Tua? Yeah, uh, Adam Schefter was talking just yesterday about plan three month recovery for Tua, and uh, the plan is that he can resume throwing in the spring before the draft. So that would be a really encouraging sign, uh, assuming he is entering the draft, of course. Um, and you know, I mean, yeah, Bo Jackson's injury was really bad, but I mean, that was that was before I was alive. Like, <laughs> we've come a long way. It doesn't sound like Tua got the worst case scenario. Did, did, Sorry did, about that did one. Did you just hear me and, crying uh, on air? I'm optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that one. <laughs> oh, man. I remember the Bo Jackson injury. Uh, Bo Jackson was our superhero. Uh, Bo knows was on every TV commercial. And that's what I thought of when Tua got hurt. I thought that he was done for. But... I guess, you know, of course, medical science has progressed. You know, that was back when we still had the bubonic plague uh, in your eyes. Uh, you <laughs> damn millennial. But, um, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully he'll be back and healthy. Yeah, it was scary. It was scary, but I'm op- I'm definitely optimistic for him. In other news, uh, Colin Kaepernick had an NFL workout for a bunch of teams. What are your thoughts oh, on that? Oh, come on, man. We all know that was a sham. <laughs> you know, the NFL was just trying to save face. I I know I tend to take the contrarian view of everything, but they wanted him to sign a waiver that was based on a standard waiver. That was their statement that they released, that it was based on a standard waiver. That is lawyer talk for they were trying to screw Kaepernick over. You know, I am fully in support of him. I hope that doesn't lose us a listener or two, but, um, come on, man. Like people are, he was right. Owners need to grow a set and sign him. He can still play in this league. I mean, yikes. Jeff Driscoll is starting a game. I, yeah, I I mean, I agree, but also as a team that a fan of a team who was there and who might need a quarterback it's tough to see where he fits. Maybe two years ago you could have made the case, but at this point he is a high attention backup. I mean, don't get me wrong. I definitely think he's. I think he's easily good enough to be in the league, but nobody's going to go out there and think, "Oh, Colin Kaepernick's our franchise quarterback," and I think that makes it. A yeah, I mean, quarterback. nobody thinks a lot of these QBs are franchise quarterbacks. They're still rolling them out every week when their starters get injured. I mean, if you don't think Cap can win you a couple games in a pinch, uh, that says more about you than it does about him. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, who's what team out there is is in need of a couple wins and needs a quarterback? All the bad teams, sure, they could use him. But do they really want to win those games? Do they want that media circus? It's only know. a media circus if you make it a media circus. In general, most of America is on Cap's side. Um they understand he wasn't uh, being dismissive of the troops. I mean, come on now. Like, aren't we past this? We're all grown-ups here. Let the man play football. Juju uh, and James Conner both got banged up this week. Are you picking anybody up to fill in for them? No. Man, I hate the Steelers' offense. I mean, I know I talked about Mason Rudolph before. Uh, I don't know how a team is going to respect Mason Rudolph as their leader when he starts a fight and then the second it escalates, he turned to the ref. I mean, if you are going to go after a defensive end who's being held by two of your linemen and the second he swings a helmet at your head, you're going to run away. Come on, man. Stand up. <laughs> fight the guy. I mean, it's already the malice in the palace, right? Were you alive for the Detroit thing? Yeah, I was alive for that. Yeah. How old were you? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know what year that happened, but I was yeah, you're too freaking long. seven, eight. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! I knew you when you I were. I might seven have the year eight. wrong. You were. I I might have the year wrong. I don't you know. You were probably having a Spider-Man birthday for my son in the backyard, <laughs> and that's a true yeah, statement. I think I was pretty oblivious to what was going on in uh, Detroit then. I don't know. When it turns into an all-out brawl, you can't run for help. So Mason Rudolph has lost my respect. You know, if you're going to start something, you finish it. Juju's in the concussion protocol. Connor is suffering inter- like injuries. Just shut him down for the year. 
finish the season. I, you don't even have a first round draft pick. I, I don't know what the Steelers did this year. Um, they're my second least favorite team after the Patriots. Um, I was gonna say you're you're fired up this week. I oh, am man. fired on up. a roll. On a I, roll. I am a little bit. I Steelers. My son lives in Pittsburgh. James <laughs> Connor's a scumbag. Um, I like Juju. I have him on a team, but yikes, they can't do anything on that team. I don't know. I'm gonna stop before like. I mean, we have like 12 <laughs> listeners, and hopefully none of them are Pittsburgh fans because I just lost them. <laughs> I was going to say, Pittsburgh fans, Kaepernick fans, Redskins fans, they're all gone. They're out. Man, do I? Uh, I <laughs> listen, I am, not, I am not a nice person. I <laughs> oh, no, come on. I mean, I have, my, I have some soft spots, but unfortunately the Steelers and Redskins aren't it. Um, anyway, Tyreek pulled up early with a hamstring injury uh hurting my man michael kloss who was <laughs> just despondent in our uh in our slack channel i felt bad for him <laughs> but he should be good to go after the bye um are you picking up mccall hardman who saw almost 80 percent of the snaps in his absence not in a dynasty format just because i think it's a tough long-term spot Tyreek's not going to go anywhere in the long term I think Sammy's got a little bit of time left on his contract obviously love Mahomes but that's a crowded offense and Miko I think got really hyped up when we thought Tyreek wasn't coming back I'm not a huge Miko Hardman fan but you did mention Sammy Watkins who I think fans of this show uh (laughs) will know I I have a man crush and when I spoke about my crush on Sammy and trading him away and trading him back and back and forth, now we have on the podcast the man who who might oh, share my love of Sammy as we yeah. have passed him back and forth like jilted lovers. Yeah, I, I took over a, an absolutely awful team. For our listeners out there, I took over one of the worst teams I've ever seen. Had the first overall pick the year Zeke was coming out, and I shipped it off to to JJ for Sammy Watkins. I absolutely loved him. It took so long for me to admit that that was a bad decision. And then who came crawling and... <laughs> back to you for Sammy? Yeah. Yeah, I think that trade was also bad. I think I lost twice on the Sammy Watkins what? trade. I could feel... anyway. Didn't I give you Mike Evans for him the second time? Yeah, but I also gave you George Kittle and Nick Chubb. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> oh, oh my word. I think I just had a heart attack. That was a good trade for me. Yeah. I don't know how my team's good in that league. Anyways. Yeah, and, Sammy, and your team is in second – got tied for first right now. Yeah. Yeah. This is our year. <laughs> no, it's not because you didn't get a tight end. Um, yeah, yeah, I know one day we'll be able to quit Sammy. I'll trade him back to you next. (laughs) Great. Yeah. Third time's the charm. (laughs) So looking ahead, I mean, this is a big week. We have Dak and Dallas at new England this week. Who do you pick? I've got new England, but I am interested to see how Dak looks against that offense. Um, you know, we haven't seen an actually good quarterback play against them yet. I'm just kidding. That was just a shot at our Eagles fans. Uh, <laughs> well done. But no, it well should be a good done. game. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that one. Oh, and by the way, um, my Jets team played against New England, so they obviously, obviously, have seen a great offense. Ah, uh, right, 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 right. So right. the Packers and 49ers are on Saturday Night Football in a potential NFC Championship preview. Who do you take? Yeah, I'm taking the Packers. What? Jimmy, G- Jimmy Garoppolo makes me a little nervous. What? Let's go Packers. All right. Yeah. Lamar and Baltimore. Now, you have Lamar Jackson. I tried to get him from you in the offseason. Um, and you wisely said no. Yeah, thank God. So going against the Rams, I should have traded you, Sammy. You would have taken that trade too, wouldn't you? No, probably. <laughs> Jeez. So <laughs> who God. wins? The Baltimore? Uh, who wins? Baltimore or the Rams on Monday night? I mean, it's hard to. 
hard to imagine right the Ravens aren't coming away with that one they're on a roll Rams have looked rough but the Rams might be getting Brandon Cooks back so that could be uh you know wake up call for their offense maybe man I hope Brandon Cooks does come back uh only because wait did I trade you for him yeah man you and I are do the only blockbuster trades in that league yeah we've had quite a few we have a history together my friend (laughs) uh so now, the big question, is this the week the Bengals finally win? Are they able, with Ryan Finley starting, to beat the Steelers? Uh, no, I think you're good to go and uh, pick the Steelers in your uh, suicide pool there. Really? I haven't picked the Steelers yet. Do you think this is the week? Yeah, pick the Steelers. So you know if the Steelers <laughs> lose, I am going to spend the first 15 minutes of this pod yelling at you. And we might lose all of our listeners, but I will yell at That's you fine. 15 Do minutes it. straight. You know what? Here's here's how you know the Bengals aren't going to win. Okay. The Redskins are currently in the number two pick spot, and nothing ever goes right for them. So the Bengals are getting the top pick. All right. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Uh, Bengals continue their losing streak. And Steelers are guaranteed a victory. Broadway Eric over there. Guaranteeing Heard a victory. Here first. victory for the Steelers. <laughs> All right. Well, man, I am out of things to say. What about you? Yeah, I'm good. Feel feel like a, a weight has been lifted. I think we got some got some pent up energy out there. That was good. Therapeutic. You know what? I'm not gonna disagree with you. I had a long day of uh parent teacher conferences <laughs> and I feel pretty good now. I think I am I have cleansed my spirit, and I can go to bed. That's good. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> All right. Well, remember to give us a follow on Twitter at Rider Dynasty, and like and subscribe our pa- pod on whatever platform you listen to us on. And if you leave a review, we promise to read it. Eric, would you like to say goodbye to our riders? Yeah, thanks for listening again, everybody. And uh, feel free to hit me up at Eric Braunmower on Twitter. I'm always open for some Dynasty questions. See you next week. All right. And I'm at JJ Winter and boat drinks, my friends. Boat drinks. We ride together. Die together. Bad boys for life. <laughs>